Well, I think, uh, Mark, you'll have to use the uh, local uh, microphone for the uh, presentation because the two CVs are already up to the grid. The red car with the yellow flashes, number four, Mick Storey, in the Rosie Racing entered car in pole position alongside him, one of the all-time greats of 2CV Racing, Pete Sparrow in the number 97, the grey and red car, the grey car with the red wheels and wings on the front row of the grid. Second row, number 89 of uh, Nick Crispy in the MIM uh, racing car. That's the pink, uh, black and orange car. A bit of a mishmash of different panels on that car. Starting alongside the first of the blue and orange uh, Hollis racing cars, Matthew Hollis on the uh, second row. Third row is the first of the two team gadget racing cars. That's the uh, gold and blue cars. And that is driven by Ainsley Boosfield, number 80. Alongside him is number 55, Steve Walford, in the Steve Walford Motorsports uh, run machine. Comes from Northfield in Birmingham. The fourth row is Leon Davies, the second of the um, gadget racing cars, also in gold and blue. And next up is the uh, number 30 of Sandro Proietti, the blue and white car. That's the uh, Bacon Racing entered machine. Then we've got 92 of Nick Rhodes in navy blue and grey. That's the Tate Rouge Crisis entered car. Crisis Racing is uh, a team I think they've amalgamated with Tate Rouge, redhead this year. Number 49 alongside them Richard Gardner in the blue car with the uh, black roof. That's um, the uh, Beacon Down car shared with Chris Tovey this weekend. 32nd board is held aloft so the uh, green flag lap about to get underway. Then we've got the number 65 Brent Savage in the Savage Motorsport, the orange and white car, and then 107, the uh, white car with the uh, black and red sides, that's Mark Grasby. Green flag is in the air then, and away they go on their green flag lap. As we mentioned, uh, the cars that are shared by two drivers, the points are scored for both drivers in one race. So, for example, uh, the number 80 car, if Ainsley Boosfield wins this race, then both he and Simon Clark get the points for a race win. Likewise, if Simon Clark wins the second row, both race, both he and Ainsley get the points for a race win. So effectively, it's the car that scores the points rather than the individual driver. These cars are powered by two-cylinder, 602cc engines. They may not be the quickest cars that we will see here this weekend. But the racing is certainly going to be some of the closest because the only option here at Donington is to slipstream each other in uh, these two CVs. And uh, to answer one question I had from an anonymous source earlier on, no, there isn't a DRS zone in this race. Sandro Proietti weaving to warm the tyres up. I don't think that's uh, quite needed here. Well, you, you're flat out all the way round here, except for going into the chicane. I, I think that's the only time in the lap that they uh, use the brakes, these intrepid racers. The number 41 car, the magnificently monikered Sir Aubrey Brocklebank, the orange and uh, navy blue halved car. If pushed to uh, tip a driver for success in this one, I would go for, if I was going to pick a car, I'd go for Pete Sparrow in the number 97, starting second on the grid, behind uh, Mick Storey. Of course, the 24-hour race coming up at the uh, end of the season. Points currently led uh, the leading driver in these series. Let's see, unfortunately, I uh, haven't got the current points table in front of me, but uh, I think it's uh, Pete Sparrow up there at the top, as uh, he so often seems to be. Coming down to the grid now, and like the other races this weekend, it will be a standing start for the two CVs as opposed to the rolling start. Looks like the Crane Championship is in full swing in the uh, infield area there. I can see some cranes on the back of a couple of trucks at work. As Mick Storey leads the uh, grid into line then in the Rosie Racing number four machine. Pete Sparrow in the Team Lion car. Nick Crispin racing for uh, MIM Racing. Then Hollis Motorsports, Team Gadget, Steve Walford Motorsports. 
Seems like the, the teams with the more amusing names down towards the back of the grid. One driver who I've noticed isn't here, who's in the programme, number seven, 67, Ronald Charles Mears. Uh, car number 67 is not out. One non-starter, of course, number 73 of Richard Hollis after he uh, rolled over in qualifying. Number 79, Roy Eastwood will be worth watching. A 2CV racing legend runs 2CVparts.com. Won the 24-hour race in the past. Last car into line, Christine Savage at the uh, back of the grid, the blue car with the Union Jack on the roof. So the green flag is waved at the back of the grid. The five-second board is held aloft and a 20-minute race for the Citroen 2CV is about to get underway. The red light's out. Here they go in a good start by Pete Sparrow in the number 97. Leads the way down towards Redgate for the first time. This quite remarkable sight of a full grid of Citroen 2 CVs heading down towards Redgate. Good start by uh, Matthew Hollis as well in the 72. Mick Storey hasn't made the best of starts. He covers the inside line, though, into Redgate. It's Sparrow who's got the lead ahead of Hollis. Side by side for third place. Mick Storey hanging on to that uh, inside line as the pack streams round behind him down towards the Craner curves. A bizarre sight they make, but still very impressive. Sparrow leads from Hollis. Uh, Nick Crispin side by side with uh, Mick Storey in the number four. Then we have got, looks like Steve Walford next in the order in the 55, side by side with the number 80 of Ainsley Boosfield as they head round the old heavy for the first time. Steve Walford out onto the grass in the 55. He leans the car back onto the circuit there. There's another one off uh, further back as well. That's the Blueberry Muffins team car, number 40 of Chris Yates, I think. It's the number 97 of Pete Sparrow who leads from 72 on Matthew Hollis in second place. Third is Nick Crispin in the 89, then Mick Storey, Ainsley Boosfield, Steve Walford recovering from that grassy moment. Nearly has another one coming out of uh, McLean's there. Cleon Davies is behind him in the number 24, the Welshman. Nick Crispin attacking Mick Storey. They've been side by side for the whole of the first lap so far. Trying to get past them and make it three wide here is uh, number 80 of Ainsley Boosfield. He's had a few wins here at Donington in the past. Nick Crispin in the middle as they head down the exhibition straight. They are three wide now, absolutely, as they head down towards the chicane. And making it four wide, Steve Walford. Steve Walford's going to go past all three of them in a single move. That's brilliant from Steve Walford. Oh, that's fantastic. Four wide, and Walford makes up three places in a single move. Well, we're in for a treat here in this race by the look of things. That's allowed the first two to get away, though. Sparrow ahead of Hollis. Steve Walford up into third place. Over the line we go then. Then we've got the two gadget racing cars of Leon Davies and Ainsley Boosfield side by side. Then it's uh, Sandro Proietti, Mick Storey and Nick Crispin. Well, they just got swallowed up there as they went wide at the uh, chicane. They've gone to the back of that uh, little group that's forming for the lead. 65 Brent Savage is uh, in behind them as well. It's, it's almost like watching the legends racing, but at a slightly slower pace, isn't it? As the uh, two gadget racing cars go side by side, the blue and gold machines through the descent into the crane occurs. Behind them is Sandro Proietti in the uh, number 30 machine. Then we've got number 92, which is uh, Nick Rhodes. 65 Brent Savage at the back of that group as well. A good fight towards the rear of the field as well. Michael Fox in the 45, 81 of Simon Turner. Meantime, the leader setting up onto the top of the circuit. Sparrow still ahead of Hollis, then everyone else trying to be third. I think it's Ainsley Boosfield who's gone through for third. Nick Rhodes making his way through, nearly spins it. Well, Nick Rhodes has lost the road altogether there. He's one way, then the other. He's surely going to spin in the dust cloud somewhere. He was snaking about all over the place there. I couldn't see in the dust cloud whether he uh, actually spun round or not. So Nick Rhodes in the number 92. So the uh, third place battle headed by Boosfield ahead of Leon Davies. Then it's Sandro Proietti, Mick Storey fighting back into this as well. Then we've got Steve Walford. What's he going to try into the chicane this time through? He's up alongside Mick Storey in the number four. He's going to try and outbreak him again into the chicane. Yes, he's done it. Makes up the place. Behind them is Nick Crispin in the number 89. As across the line goes Sparrow and Hollis. The two leaders, they pull well clear of Gadget Racing, whose two cars are still side by side there. Davies just ahead of Boosfield at the timing line. Sandro Proietti is in uh, fifth position in the number 30 machine. Uh, it's Walford in sixth place, then Storey seventh, Crispin eighth, Brent Savage number 65 is ninth, and Mark Grasby in 107, rounding out the top ten. That's over the line they go. Two leaders heading down the crane. Occurs the back of the field, Christine Savage at the moment in the number 23 machine. 
Over the line she goes. So everybody's still running. All 22 took the start. The Battle of the Third has opened up slightly now with uh, Mian Davies ahead of Ainsley Booseville. They're being challenged by the blue and white number 30 of uh, Sandra Proietti, the ex Fiat racer. It's Christine Savage, and the car she'll hand over to Adam Bollins for race two. Heads through uh, Redgate Corner at the back of the field. Still, Mian Davies heads this train of six two CVs for third place. 89 Nick Crispin, that slightly battered looking 89 car hanging on to the tail of this group. Steve Walford on the attack again, trying to pass Sandro Proietti. He's got him going into Coppice Corner. Next in the order is Mick Storey in the uh, number four. Just noticed uh, whereabouts is Katie Storey, his daughter in the 22. She's in 12th place behind Nick Rhodes in 92. So Nick Rhodes survived that uh, sideways moment earlier on as Ainsley, Ainsley Boosfield tries to pass his gadget racing teammate but Steve Walford late on the brakes of the chicane again he goes fourth behind Ainsley Boosfield the 24 of Leon Davies goes down to fifth place still Sparrow towing Matthew Hollis behind him at the front of the field it's Boosfield Walford Steve Walford's got the window uh, folded up there open on the driver's side then it's uh, Ainsley Boosfield I think in fifth place no Davies down to fifth I apologize uh, Mick Storey attacking Sandro Proietti at the back of this group. Nick Crispin's got ahead of them in the 89. So Proietti goes down into uh, eighth position now. Behind them we've got uh, Mark Grasby and the rest of them. Leaders head down the crane of curves. Let's have a look at the gap for second and third. 5.2 seconds is uh, Hollis ahead of Bowesfield. Only three tenths of a second between the two leaders. They've got to start to uh, help each other. They've almost what they've got to do almost is to bump draft each other like the legends do. Let's face it, they are a slightly similar shape of car to the legends. Two CVs a bit taller. It's Sparrow from Hollis. Then we've got uh, Ainsley Brucefield in third place in the uh, number 80 car. Side by side before. Here comes Leon Davies having a go around the outside there of uh, Steve Walford in the 55. Walford in the red machine holds him off. Then we've got Nick Crispin in the multicoloured number 89 being challenged by the rosy racing car of number four, Mick Storey. Behind him is Sandro Proietti, the ex-Fiat racer in number 30. Then we've got a gap uh, back to who's next. I think it's Mark Graspy next in the 107. And rounding up the top 10, Nick Rhodes in the 92. So they've got ahead of Brent Savage in car 65. Steve Walford, is he going to try his late-breaking move again into the chicane? He's got this patented. Yes, he's done it again. Forces Ainsley Boosfield to go wide, takes third place, bash into the side of Leon Davies. That's dented a wing on the 24 car. Uh, side by side as they come across the line for third place. Leon Davies just about holding third ahead of Walford. I hope that hasn't pushed any bodywork onto the tyre. They could, they could be six wide here, going down into Redgate Corner. This is incredible. Six of them together. For third place, who's going to come out of this with third? Leon Davis just about holds third on the inside. Nick Crispin's going through for fourth past Steve Walford. Then we've got to Ainsley Boosfield, Mick Storey, Sandro Proietti. Uh, next to Grasby is ninth. Brent Savage having a go at Nick Rhodes for tenth place as they go through Red Gates. Behind them, Katie Storey in the number 22. And she's just ahead of number 40 of Chris Yates. Still, the all leader, though, is Sparrow ahead of Hollis. They're pulling clear all the time of this squabble for third place between six of them. Martin, uh, uh, Steve Walford rather, goes wide, coming through the old hairpin there onto the grass briefly. Holds it together though, still your leader is the number 97 of Pete Sparrow. We're coming up towards half distance, just under 12 minutes of this race to go for the classic 2CV racing club. Clean Davies with the damage to the left front corner of his car, still holding that third place after a little tap from uh, Steve Walford last time she came Walford wide again coming out of McLean's onto the grass he's lost out to Mick Storey there who was the pole sitter in this race now down into sixth position Sandro Proietti closing up on Steve Walford now as well third place we've still got the uh, number uh, 24 car of Clean Davies Nick Crispin trying to get up the outside in the 89 he's going to take third place away now the man who started third on the grid here comes Ainsley Boosfield up into fourth as well. So whether that uh, bit of damage is affecting the uh, 24 car of Leon Davies at all, we will wait and see. He's down to fifth, though. Mick Storey trying to close up on him. But it's Sparrow from Hollis at the front of the field, and they are now well ahead. The gap back to third place is now seven and a half seconds, with Nick Crispin up into third position. 
black and white flag has gone out to car 107. That's Mark Grasby running in ninth place and uh, Katie Storey in trouble. Makes a mistake there at the chicane. In fact, she's coming into the pits, so Katie Storey has got a problem there in the second of the Rosie Racing cars. She was running in uh, around 13th place. Katie into the Rosie Racing pits. As the leaders head uh, down to the bottom of the circuit, Sparrow still from Hollis. Now, who's in third? This time through, it's Nick Crispin ahead of Ainsley Boosfield, then Clean Davies. Then we have got the number four of Mick Storey, Steve Walford in his slightly wayward handling at number 55, and next through behind him, Sandro Proietti. Uh, I've just been giggling away to myself because I've just been uh, multiplying 602, which is the engine capacity of each one of these cars, by the 22 cars that are out there, which gives you 13,244 cc, which is um, all of these cars put together, still smaller than the engines in some of the trucks that we've seen yep. out there over the course of the weekend. <laughs> Just made me giggle, sorry for that. Pete Sparrow still continuing to lead. Great fight that's going on. I've missed some of it with doing the truck podium, but he's not getting away, is he? The multiple former champion, Pete Sparrow, under enormous pressure from the number 72 car of Matthew Hollis, who again is just firmly sitting in the slipstream and not really trying to attack. A little puff of smoke from Pete Sparrow as he threads his way through the Robert Chicane. Lap number six is about to be chalked into the book. Number 97, Pete Sparrow leads. Number 72, Matthew Hollis from fourth on the grid in second place and it's great fight going on as you've been talking about for third and fourth position which is the car of Nick Crispin under pressure from Ainsley Boosfield and Crispin's actually just now gone over the start finish line and popped in the fastest lap of the race at 1 minute 45.585. Steve Walford thinks he's in a legend he's bump drafting Nick Story <laughs> as they head down towards Regal. This is like Legends Racing because they're similar shape cars it's like Legends Racing just a bit slower <laughs> just it, as close. It's great fun I say I've not bumped into them for about five or six years but it is a pleasure to see two CVs again they might not be the quickest racing here we go look uh, uh, we are two by two <laughs> by two down through the Craner curve so nose to tail and side by side for four cars and who's at the back end of that little it's train yeah it is isn't it yeah the ex uh, Fiat racer and he is tumbled all right big big mistake midway through the corner and with the damage to the front end of that number 24 car all over the grass goes uh, Leon Davis another former champion is Leon Davis and it also now looks as though for the lead of the race Pete Sparrow for the first time has a very small amount, only about two, two CV lengths of daylight between himself and Matthew Hollis for the lead. No daylight between this battle for third place though, they are really throwing these machines around, they are loving this. I love how Steve Walford as well has got the uh, folding window folded <laughs> upwards as well. Does that, does that affect the aero on these cars? Well, well they haven't got any aero on these cars. <laughs> We were saying earlier as well, though, in response to one question I got this morning, no, there isn't a DRS zone for these cars. No, there is not, no, but that would be something interesting, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, you get some very strange contraptions in the 24-hour <laughs> race, the modified Continental cars. They look very bizarre. Meantime, we've got a bit of bump drafting going on for third. Nick Crispin under fire from Ainsley Boosfield in the Gadget Racing car. Through the chicane they come. Crispin holds the place. Across the line go the leaders. 0.43 of a second in between Sparrow and Hollis, who've got seven and a half minutes of this race to go. Crispin third, then it's Boosfield, then a small gap now back to Mick Storey in fifth. Walford sixth, Proietti seventh, and uh, the slightly battered car of Leon Davis after a bit of bashing at the chicane earlier on is in eighth. Then a long gap back to in ninth place, the number 92 of Nick Rhodes. Uh, Mark Grasby is tenth, then eleventh Brent Savage, and twelfth Chris Yates in the Blueberry Muffins car number 40. Looks like we've had another new fastest lap of the race put in as they mix themselves amongst the traffic this time. Christine Savage stays neatly out of the way of Pete Sparrow, who continues to lead. And despite all of the best efforts for Matthew Hollis, he's not as yet been able to ruffle the feathers of Pete Sparrow as he continually pulls away. New fastest lap is a 1 minute 45.461 for the race leader. The lead advantage is still only 0.4 of a second, though, but quite thankful will they be that they met the traffic in the right place and the fact that Christine Savage, who's going to join you in the commentary box, is she not, for the second race, moved out of the way and let them go through. First time she's sat in that car, she said in qualifying this morning. Well, she's learned the car very quickly. She may be a lap down, but still going strong. Uh, no retirement so far. Black and white flag for car number 55. Now, who is that? Steve Walford. Well, no great surprise there because he's been all over the place all the way through this race as Steve. Loving every second of it, though. As the leaders come up to lap Katie Storey, she's been into the pits earlier on in the 22. The daughter of Mick Storey racing car number four moves out the way, lets Pete Sparrow through. And now, unfortunately, Matthew Hollis is going to catch the 22 car at the worst possible place, right in the middle of the chicane. Goes over the curbs there on his way out. Katie Storey will move to one side down the straight. 
and uh, let the 72 car through. This is going to open up a lead gap for Pete Sparrow. Another new fastest lap of the race, 145.005. The lead gap up to nearly 1.4 seconds now. All over the grass again is Leon Davis, and that's going to lose him another couple of places. The battered front end, the front left wing on that car with the big dint in it. So Sandro Proietti at the wheel of number 30 has now gone through. And, well, Leon Davis is dropping down through the order now. That is going to drop him down to the bottom of the top eight. We've just seen another fastest lap, despite the fact that they had a little bit of traffic to deal with. Pete Sparrow has put in another new fastest lap of the race. Eight laps now completed. One minute 45.005. Well, it certainly looks as though Sparrow's now flying away, isn't he, in the lead of the race? 1.4 seconds is the lead advantage. Sparrow flying away. I like it. Down the Craner curves, uh, Proietti still ahead of the number 24, which is uh, Leon Davies. I wonder if there is a bit of damage to the left front corner of that car, not just superficial. Proietti makes a mistake there coming out of the old hairpin, runs wide towards the grass. But yes, Pete Sparrow in the clear in the lead now in the 97. Matthew Hollis in second place, still the battle going on further back in the order. Here comes Leon Davies at the inside at McLean's, retakes seventh place from Sandro Proietti. And up the hill towards Coppice Corner. We've got four and a half minutes to go. Black and white flag for car 97. That's the race leader and 72 Matthew Hollis. <laughs> so both of the leading cars have been given a black and white flag as Proietti throws it sideways through Coppice Corner. This group, oh, they've caught uh, Steve Walford once again here in the 55. His uh, wife Julie will take over that car for the uh, second race later on. Here comes Leon Davies on the attack there into the chicane. He's trying to play uh, Steve Walford at his own manoeuvre here, down the inside into the chicane. We saw Steve Walford take three cars in one move at the end of the first lap doing that, and now Leon Davies has uh, done the, the same back to him. There goes the third place fight over the line, Crispin and uh, Bowsfield nose to tail. Fifth place is still Mick Storey. Uh, Clean Davies is going to go after him now. Clean Davies has done the fastest lap of the race, 144.5. Yeah, I that think time, that's half a second quicker than everyone else. I think that was the good toe that he got, wasn't it, around the circuit? If you could pick up the toe in these cars, it really does make a massive, massive difference. And despite the overtake, yeah, new fastest lap, 144.5 exactly for Leon Davis, back up into sixth place. It didn't seem that many laps ago, he was down in eighth, but he's worked beautifully well. Pete Sparrow still continues to lead. The lead advantage grew by another point two of a second. A little bit sideways again, coming out of the old hairpin, oversteer in the 2CV, who'd have thought that? Uh, with the second place car of Matthew Hollis still there in second place. Now, those two that have been given black and white warning flags, um, they needn't worry too much, because at the moment they are more than five seconds ahead of the third place car, which is number 89, Nick Crispin. So they need to stay within the confines of the circuit but should they make another small mistake and run wide it's not going to have a massive impact on certainly the first two is it uh, with Crispin there in third place, Ainsley Boosfield in fourth place, number four, Mick Storey in fifth place, and completing the top six is number 24, Leon Davis, who's still having a busy old race isn't he, he's catching the next car ahead of him. Yes, Boosfield just got back ahead of uh, the uh, number 22 of Katie Storey as they lap the second of the Rosie Racing cars, next to come past her will be uh, Katie's father, Mick, here's a battle further back coming through McLean's. Uh, Mark Grasby's dropping back in the 107 car. Number 40 has just got ahead of him. That is Chris Yates. Chris Yates. And he started back on the 10th row of the grid. So he's come through very well indeed up into uh, the top 10 now ahead of Brent Savage. Mark Grasby losing another place as the leaders go over the start finish line. 2.1 seconds now the lead gap for Sparrow over Hollis. Then it's Crispin, Bowsfield, uh, Mick Storey. Leon Davies is having a go at him down into Red Gate to try and make up another place. And he's just popped in another new fastest lap of the race as Leon Davis with a woman at 44.028. So he's going very well. Can he squeeze his way through a pass mix story? Looks as though he's done it. Yes, it certainly does. As they head uh, out of sight there towards Hollywood and the Grainer curves. So the order. Uh, Sandro Proietti has lost the toe there somewhat. He's uh, down in eighth place now. We've got a three way battle heading down towards Redgate, that's uh, Grasby, Savage and Yates. Yates in the Blueberry Muffins car, so Brent Savage gets a bit of a wiggle on there as he slows for uh, Redgate. I was going to say on the brakes for Redgate, but they don't, as I said, you don't really brake here other than for the chicane. Now you throw the car in and let it scrub the speed is the way to do it. It's all about keeping momentum up in these cars, so chuck the car in, let the car get sideways a little bit, that scrubs the speed, and then it therefore means you just keep your foot planted all of the way through. Different style of driving, it certainly works. We've had somebody just run wide going out of McLean's corner. Couldn't quite see which car it was, but it was, I think, one of the Team Gadget cars that just ran a little bit wide, and we'll have a look at 
the lap time because that might be the telltale sign as to whether time was lost. Pete Sparrow still continuing on his merry way. There are 50 seconds to go, so he's going to chalk this lap into the book and head on to his final lap next time through. And, well, with a 2.4-second advantage, it's looking good, isn't it, for him? It certainly is, yes. We have uh, coming into the last lap this time as Matthew Hollis throws his car through the chicane in uh, second place. Here they come then up towards the stripe. Into the last lap goes Pete Sparrow in the Team Lion car. Or Team Sea Lion, as they have been uh, known in the past. Third place is still Nick Crispin in the 89. He's got away from uh, the two uh, Team Gadget cars now. Davies ahead of Bersfield. Bersfield clocks uh, a 148. That was the car that ran that wide. That was the car then. that ran wide. Yeah. So then Story, Mick Story, uh, Steve Walford, uh, Sandro Proietti should be uh, next through. Yes, there he is. And I uh, thought I saw a puff of smoke from uh, Sandro's car there as he's being closed down by Nick Rhodes. Yes, yeah, slower lap from Proietti that time through a 151. He's about to be caught by Nick Rhodes for eighth place. Uh, Chris Yates rounds out the top 10 in the number 40. He's come through from 19th on the grid. Impressive look for the uh, number 40 car ahead of Mark Grasby and Brent uh, Savage. Through the old hairpin go the leaders. Still the team gadget cars, the gold and blue cars together in third and fourth. But Pete Sparrow is heading for his latest 2CV victory. I'm going to ask him how, just how many he's won over the years, because I certainly can't count them. <laughs> well, my, my, my records on the championship go back several years, to say the least. Um, I've got him chalked at, well, I haven't got all of the details, at minimum of five championships. How many wins, God only knows. Uh, but he's already had three this year, because he won uh, race one and race two at Cadwell Park. He won the last race that we had up at Alton Park as well. And he really has been a man to beat for many, many a year in 2CV racing. He's already out of Coppice Corner and heading down the exhibition straight for the final time. He was under pressure in the early stages of the race from Matthew Hollis uh, amongst others but he has been able to shake away the attentions of everybody else and he turns the car through Roberts for the final time the checkered flag awaits the multiple former champion Peter Sparrow comes through and he's going to claim the win as he heads over the start finish line Pete Sparrow claims the win it is going to be number 72 Matthew Hollis in second position Nick Crispin number 89 through in third place and of the team gadget cars it is just going to be Ainsley Bosefield who goes back ahead of Liam Davis on that the final lap of the race so Ainsley Bosefield the reigning champion comes through and finishes in fourth place Liam Davis a former champion in fifth place and Mick Story long long time 2CV racer completes the top six seventh place goes the way of number 55 Steve Walford eighth place is not going to be Sandro Proetti because there are those telltale signs of smoke he was caught in the end by Nick Rhodes who came through and finished in eighth place so Proietti finishes in ninth place and Chris Yates will complete the top ten at the wheel of car number 40 well that's it for the two CVs for the moment the one good thing is is that we we'll get to see them all again later on we certainly do yes okay I'm gonna head down and uh, have a chat to our uh, top three in the pit lane then as the remaining cars come across the line of oh, Simon Turner taking the flag in the pit lane there he pulls in towards the end, so possibly a problem for him on the last lap. We'll uh, go and grab a word with our top three, then Pete Sparrow, Matthew Hollis and Nick Crispin. We have lost one car into the gravel trap by the look of things with some sort of mechanical issue which the uh, marshals are just keeping an eye on at the moment. They've got the fire extinguishers there should they be needed and the car that's gone off, we didn't quite see it head off into the gravel trap. It was Richard Gardner that's gone off and I can't quite work out where he's gone. It's at Coppice Corner by the look of things. If I stand on my tiptoes and look out of the window, I could just see a car in the gravel trap up at Coppice Corner. So that is one car that will need recovering before we can net, uh, get our next race onto the grid. Coming up again we're back to truck racing again it will be the division two trucks that will be heading out onto the circuit very very shortly for what for them will be their penultimate race of the weekend they've still got one more race to come after the one that they're about to start and we'll also of course look forward to seeing the division one trucks back out later on as well so there's plenty still going on there's lots going on off circuit as well we're getting towards two o'clock now which means the sub show the trucks for the uk drift trucks and the team maximum lock are there together with the caravan Quarter past two, they are on doing their set. And then in about an hour's time, that's when we will see the 
last of our truck balls of the day, the Truckmate UK Truck Ball Competition in the live action arena. Dave Goddard made his way downstairs. Have a word to the top three in the 2CB Championship. Well, Pete's Barry, it's another win in the 2CV Championship, but they don't come that easy. Uh, that was a race, though, that calmed down a bit in the second half. Yeah, I was, uh, I was quite lucky. I managed to get away from uh, everybody else. It's always a bit of a bun fight the first few laps. I just wanted to get past the pole man, um, just so that I had some clean air and I could just get away. Um, Matt I've, has been quick all year. He's second in the Championship. I expected him to come with me. He always gets, I mean, I was watching some of his videos on YouTube last weekend and he always gets a good start, so I thought he's bound to be there, and sure enough he was. And then we managed to make a bit of a gap because the people in third, fourth, fifth, sixth were uh, uh, battling a little bit, so we got away. Um, and I think I managed to lose Matt in traffic once he'd lost the, uh, the, the toe. Um, I lost him a little bit, but um, I'd have been really pleased for him to get a win today because he deserves one. He's been driving really well this year, but today it's mine, so. Well, congratulations. Anyway, great, great drive. Thanks very much indeed. Cheers. Thank you. Well, Matthew Hollis and Nick uh, Crispin with me then, uh, second and third respectively in that race. Uh, Matt, we'll start with you. A solid result, and certainly Pete was expecting you to give him a, a run for his money there. Yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're you know, we're well, in fact, all three of us are the, the top three in the championship, so it was all to play for. And uh, yeah, I, I got a good start and just latched onto the back of him and I thought I'll, I'll stick with him for uh, until the last lap if I could. But we, we came up on a couple of a tail enders and I, I just ever so slightly lost a toe. Once that happens, then then you're kind of a sitting duck. Uh, and then I had Nick catch me in my mirrors all the time, so I was, I was I'm quite pleased that I just managed to hold on to second by the end. Well, Nick, you were both embroiled in that almighty fight that was going on uh, for a second on back early on. Talk us through some of that. Well, I think I got a pretty good start. I was like third, fourth, going into the first two or three corners, and then I just got swamped. And I think I ended up back in ninth, which, you know, when you can see the lead two getting away, you've got no hope. And unless you can find someone to work with to drag yourself back up to the front group, you've got, it's all hard work. But I had a few good battles on the way through. Got a bit of help from Leon to catch up as far as we could and we broke free. And then I lost Leon, I think he had a moment on one of the last corners and sort of got second, uh, got up, stayed in third and just kept going. And it was like, I could see Matt and I hadn't seen the last lap board. So I was hoping and hoping there was longer to go and I was getting him, but just ran out of time. So all to play for in the next race. Looking forward to it. Thanks very much both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we'll just very quickly um, guide you through the grid before we then uh, will hand the headset over to Christine Savage, who's going to be joining Dave Goddard for this one. The grid can be slotted in are on page number 46 of your programme. Number 97, Pete Sparrow, sits on pole position and alongside his 24, which is Tom Perry for this uh, race. Uh, 97 and 24, row one. Row two of the grid is 89. Nick Crispin went beautifully well in race number one. And alongside him is a number 30 car driven by Luca Proetti, uh, son of Sandro, who took part in the first race. Uh, Luca takes over for this one. 89 and 30, row number two. Row three of the grid is number 880, Simon Clark, and number 72, Matthew Hollis, 80 and 72, row three. Row four is number four, which is Mick Storey, and alongside is Martin Ryman. We did wonder whether we might see that car out because it was involved in an incident in race number one when it was in the hands of uh, Aubrey Brocklebank, but the car is out. Four and 41 on row number four. Row 5, 92 is Brian Heary and 107, the renumbered car of Mark Grasby, 92 and 107. Row 6 is 23, which is Adam Bollins and 65, which is Brent Savage, 23 and 65. The seventh row is 49, Chris Tovey. Uh, that car had a roll into the gravel trap at Coppice Corner late on into the race. That was what we picked up on the cameras after the chequered flag. They've repaired it and they've got it out. Great work done by Beacon Down team. And alongside is number 79, which is Roy Eastwood, 49 and 79. 
Row 8 is 55, Julie Walford, and number 70, Nigel Hollis, 55 and 70. Row 9 is 45, which is Michael Fox, and 96, Chris Hall, 45 and 96. Row 10 is number 81, Simon Turner, and number 73, which is Richard Hollis, 81 and 73. 73 is not there. Right, so Richard's gone. He rolled in qualifying. Yep, so he's missing. And number 71 is on the inside of the 11th row of the grid, John Widowson, and number 40, Chris Yates, will join him for company 70 and 41. That's the grid, Dave. OK, then, ready for our second 2CV race of the weekend, then, and I am uh, rejoined by uh, a voice we heard in qualifying earlier on, Christine Savage. Hello. How was, your, how was your race earlier on, then? Oh, a bit frustrated. I don't want to go through the list of racing drivers' excuses, because anybody who knows racing drivers knows we have all the excuses in the world. But it's not my car, it didn't fit me, my ribs were touching the steering wheel, and yet I was fingertips on the gear change, and barely, you know, on toe tips on some of the pedals. And I just couldn't wring its neck, really. A bit of work. If I'd had a chance to test and get the car to really fit me, I'm, I'm sure we'd have gone a lot better. But it's back in one piece. Adam's a lot happier in the car, so watch out for him. He'll go a bit quicker than I did. Well, at least you enjoyed yourself. That's the uh, main thing. Yeah, yeah. How can, you, how can you not enjoy racing one of these little things? Well, I'd say the weird thing is I used to instruct here years ago in the Jim Russell days. And... Um, I tell you what, these things seem awfully slow compared to the Astras that I used to instruct in. Yeah, I'm that old, I'm afraid, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Stop being cheeky, Mark Merrill. <laughs> My daughter's looking really puzzled. She has no idea what we're talking about. But anyway. OK, Pete Sparrow uh, up into pole position this time, second on the grid uh, for race one. Tom Perry alongside, not to be confused with the Speedway rider of the same name. Yep sharing the number 24 car with uh, Leon Davis, who was out in race one, the former champion. That's the blue and gold uh, gadget racing car. Second row, 89, Nick Crispin in the multicoloured special. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what we call that car. We call it Rat Look after the first race, a bit like uh, the American street rods that you see. I was told to say it has a certain rustic charm. I called it a shed at Cadwell, and, and um, Nick wasn't very happy. So. Well, Nick called it a shed himself when I interviewed him earlier. <laughs> I have to say it has a certain rustic charm. It's a shed. Well screwed together underneath, though. Don't let looks belie you. It looks awful, but <laughs> it is well screwed together, and it, 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 it's, you know does what it should do in the important bits. Uh, Luca Proietti alongside him. He's, I believe he's the son of uh, Sandro. That's right. He's only really young. He, um, his very first race was in a 2CV Alton Park on his 17th birthday and uh, got involved in a really heavy accident. And uh, uh, we were all really worried that that would put him off being his very first race. But he, he's, he's turning into a great little racing driver. Well, we have seen some quite famous names racing 2CVs over the last couple of years. Ben Barnicoats and uh, Jamie Chadwick of single-seater racing fame have both had a go yep. in these. Jamie did it just to get a signature because she wanted to do a GT3 race or something. Um, but we've also had the likes of Mike Wilds, for, like, former Formula, former one, Formula yeah. 1 and sports car legend. So, um, they're good fun. People come along to have some fun. A number fun. of celebrity racers uh, in the 24-hour race. Even Top Gear have done a feature on these fairly recently as well. Yeah, yeah. And we've, in the past, we've had uh, pop star Mike Lindup from Level 42, if you're old enough to remember them. He used to have a 2CV for a while. Uh, good racing driver, actually. We've not seen him for a while. Well, let's get him back out there if we can. So the car's coming up to the grid then. Martin Ryman in the number 41 machine, uh, driven by Sir Aubrey Brocklebank earlier on. Mm -hmm. It's good right. to see that car out, actually. It looked quite sad after an incident. Um, we're missing car 22, and I think, I can't promise this, it's because Katie was involved in that incident with Aubrey earlier. Uh, Katie, we saw call into the pits during the first race, so there's probably... Uh, Additional problems there. Roy Eastwood is back out in the number 79. Now, it's listed as Roy Eastwood on the grid, but uh, the second driver in the programme listed as Martin Harrell. Uh, yes, Martin's not driving. Right, so um, it is Roy in that car. Yeah, Roy just wanted to do both races, and so he's doing both races. Okay, green flag at the back of the grid then. Here we go then. The red lights are on. 20 minutes of 2CV racing gets underway. Not the best of starts for Tom Perry on the front row. Luca Proietti's made a good start from the uh, second row. They head down towards the uh, first corner. It's Pete Sparrow who's made a great start in the grey and red. Number 97 car. Luca Proietti trying to slot into second but uh, one of the gadget racing cars is there 
on the uh, inside. I think that's going to be the uh, number 24 of Tom Perry, who's recovered from his poor start. They will file their way around Redgate for the first time. No incident uh, so far. Pete Sparrow has the lead once again. In the sunshine, they're tricky to make out uh, which of the gadget racing cars that is there in third place. Uh, as they head down, looks like Nick Crispin has gone up into second. They head down into the old hairpin for the first time. And somebody running oh. wide onto the uh, grass there. That's the number 41. Martin that Ryman. is Martin Ryman. Nearly went out into the gravel there on the outside of the old hairpin. He's held it together, lost a couple of places. But they've all uh, kept it on the island by and large in the early stage of this one. Going for the lead up the inside is Nick Crispin in the number 89 machines. They go into McLean. Yes, he's got through. Then it's the first of the gadget racing machines. Is that Simon Clark or is it Tom Perry? It's difficult to see. It's Tom Perry. I think Nick Crispin might be in the lead, you know, from what I can see through the window. Have a look as they come out of Coppice. No, it is still Pete Sparrow there with the lead. They head on to the exhibition straight, but uh, he might be in the lead by the time they reach the end of the straight. Luca Proietti as uh, side by side with Nick Crispin. Then we have got Tom Perry. Then it's the first of the Hollis cars. Matthew Hollis, he's under pressure from, uh, is that Brian Heary, number 92? Yes, he's made a good start. He started back on row five and he's attacking the leading group here. Into the chicane, Pete Sparrow leads it. Matthew Hollis runs a bit wide and the first element of the chicane there. Brian Heary, the ex-Rover turbo racer, will uh, go through down the straight. And he's got the, the other gadget racing car, number 80 of Simon Clark, the car raced by Ainsley Boosfield earlier on on the attack as well. Mick Storey is in behind them, but Luca Proietti going with our race leader here. Sparrow from Proietti, then Crispin. Perry is in fourth position, and they're about five or six wide further back in the pack. Goodness me. Normal for 2CV racing. I know it is. <laughs> you can get ten abreast if there's enough room. Oh, and they would if there was, I tell you. <laughs> Down the craner curves, then it's Pete Sparrow ahead of Luca Proietti, Nick Crispin in third place, then it's uh, Gadget Racing in fourth and fifth places, Brian Heary is in sixth, Mick Storey in seventh, then Matthew Hollis in uh, eighth position, oh, Mick Storey nearly spun it there, coming out of the old heaven, he got sideways, got a wheel onto the grass, further back Julie Walford, the uh, wife of uh, Steve Walford who we saw out earlier on, leads uh, the next group. Yeah, she's a quick driver but she's recovering from a shattered ankle from a karting incident, so um, but it's great to see her back. You no, know, that was a nasty injury she had. Leaning on each other there. Nick Crispin's lost a couple of places. Gadget Racing have got past in the uh, 24 and the 80. Tom Perry and Simon Clark. It's a uh, side by side behind Nick Crispin in the MIM car. About to lose another place because Brian Heary in uh, car number 92, the Tate Rouge Crisis team. That's an amalgamation of two teams, isn't it? Tate Rouge and Crisis Racing. It is, yeah. I think Crisis, Crisis is Nick and um, Tate Rouge is Paul Robertson, who's here running cars but not driving. OK, so Nick Rhodes is the man behind uh, Crisis Racing, and uh, they nearly had a crisis there because Mick Storey and Nick Crispin went either side of them. Crispin over the curves, bounces his way through the chicane in the uh, MIM racing car. Across the line go the leaders, and Pete Sparrow not getting away here. Luca Proietti up there in the Bacon Racing uh, car in second place. Team Gadget third and fourth. It's four cars line astern for the lead. Four cars almost line astern for fifth place. So they're splitting into quartets and pairs mm -hmm. in uh, this one. They'll be drafting uh, legend style again here. Absolutely. These are aerodynamic bricks. The gain you get by working together. And, and it's not just the car behind that gets a toe along. Um, it takes the drag off the car in front. So where you've got a train of four in the lead like that, they will be working together. And Luca Proietti looks fairly set in second there, but don't be fooled by that. He's a very, very wise head on young shoulders. He will just be letting... Um, oh, and uh, is that Pete the leader Sparrow? that's gone off? Yes, yes, Pete Sparrow's gone under the grass at the old hairpin, so we're going to see uh, a probable change for the lead here. It could be Proietti about to take the lead. Yes, uh, he has, has he? Side by side, no, it's, it's uh, one of the gadget cars. That's Tom Perry that's gone into the lead. So third to first, Proietti must have lifted off as Pete Sparrow went off ahead of him. And it's Team Gadget 1 and 2 because Simon Clark has gone through in a second. You mentioned these cars are aerodynamic bricks. Yeah. The shape of one of these cars, and uh, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, has always reminded me more of a, an upturned pram. Uh, that's one of their nicknames. I, I forget the, the word in French, but the, one of the derogatory French nicknames for them is the French word for pram. So, uh, yes. I don't speak enough French, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> no. I, I apologise. <laughs> and again, I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Just the shape has always reminded me of one. Here come Team Gadget. They're bump drafting each other here. Absolutely. Down towards uh, the chicane here. The number 80 of uh, Simon Clark on the tail of uh, the 24 Tom Perry. Who swings it into scroll off some speed there. Here comes Luca Proietti on the fight back. 
into a second place. Pete Sparrow trying to go with him. Over the line they go past Simon Clark in the at number 80, down to fourth. Fifth is Nick Crispin, sixth Brian Heary, seventh is Matthew Hollis still hanging on in there. It's seven cars for the lead now because Mick Storey, where has Mick Storey gone? We seem to have lost the uh, Rosie Racing car. I didn't see what happened to him. Oh, he's uh, slowing up. He's coming into the pits by the look of things. Yes, not a good day for Rosie, the racing car, as we could refer to it. Uh, no, and uh, we're missing 22. And uh, although Katie races 22, Mick fixes both cars. Oh dear, so Mick's uh, got his work cut out, but he's got a problem with his own car. Now he's into the pit lane as the leaders head uh, down towards. And Pete Sparrow's got the lead back while all that was going on, down into the old hairpin. So his uh, slipstreaming worked into Redgate there. Absolutely, and uh, Nick Crispin's threw up a bit of dust there, trying to keep it on. Those seven will try and stick together because it, as long as they're nose to tail, it almost doesn't matter who's in the lead going into the last lap, it only matters who's in the lead as we cross the checkered, checkered flag. Well, Sparrow's lost the lead again because Team Gadget have uh, got him. And uh, in uh, to the lead has gone, I think that's the 80 car of Simon Clark that's uh, taking his turn to lead this time. Tom Perry second, Luca Proietti third, then Sparrow's back to fourth, so he's gone from fourth to first and back to fourth again in the space of half a lap and Brian Heary is uh, having a go at him now in the uh, number 92 as well. Six behind them we have Nick Crispin and seventh Matthew Hollis, so this is the septet battling for the lead. Brian Heary up the inside, three wide into the chicane. We saw this earlier on with Steve Walford. Brian Heary's going to take third place away in a single move there. Up to third he goes. Pete Sparrow down to fifth. Brian Heary gets a tap from Luca Proietti. That wasn't intentional. They just ran out of room there at the chicane to go three wide. It's Gadget racing one and two across the line. Pete Sparrow fighting back up into fourth place in the Lion car or trying to side by side with Luca Proietti. Now, I'm just looking at the lead car. There seems to be some damage on his bonnet. I think he was being a little bit overzealous in the, when he was bump drafting his teammate earlier. So just watch that. These cars are very, very sensitive to front end damage. They're air cooled. If you damage your fan, you're in big trouble. Yes, that's why I wondered about a bit of damage on Matthew Hollis's car earlier on, but that was a legacy of uh, another event. The man who finished second in race one, Richard Hollis, unfortunately, we saw uh, rolling his car in practice, the old hairpin is Luca Proietti to the inside of Pete Sparrow, and he goes through up into fourth place. Sparrow down to fifth once again. Crispin is sixth. Hollis in seventh place. They come out of the old hairpin. The next group, but eighth place, is uh, now headed by uh, Chris Tovey in the Chris Tovey rather in the car yes. that uh, rolled earlier on at the end of race number one. He's got Mark Grasby behind him in 107. We ought to thank the officials for getting that car out as well. There was about six scrutineers around that car at one point, weighing up whether or not, you know, really checking that roll cage really thoroughly before concluding that car was safe to race. It certainly is, and Chris Tovey driving it well here. He's got the number 41 of Martin Ryman behind him as well. Julie Walford is in that group in 55 on her return from injury to racing. It looks like Mick Storey's in the middle of there as well. He's rejoined out of the pits a lap down. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so uh, mix going again, that's uh, good news. Waiting for the leaders to uh, head into our sights uh, once again. They're coming through the chicane now, here they come, still gadget racing, the gold and blue cars one and two. Which way round are they this time? It's still Simon Clark ahead of Tom Perry. Third is Nick Rhodes, is, uh, the Nick Rhodes car being driven by Brian Heary this time, sorry. Proietti fourth and uh, Sparrow fifth. Sixth we've got Nick Crispin, seventh is Matthew Hollis. In that order they remain as they head down line astern into Redgate. Eighth is Chris Tovey, ninth Grasby, and it's Julie Walford in tenth because, of course, uh, the uh, car ahead of her, Mick Storey, as we've just mentioned, is a lap down. That's right. Um, if you're seeing puffs of smoke as they turn into Redgate, don't worry. That's just where they're marginally locking up the tyres as they're turning in and unloading that corner of the car. So if you're seeing puffs of smoke down at Redgate, don't panic. It's perfectly normal. It's just tyres. Leaders heading down to the bottom of the circuit. Once again, it's still Simon Clark, number 80, who holds the lead. There's this train of cars heading down the uh, crater curves. Now Chris Tovey at the head of it. He's got Mick Storey behind him, then Grasby, uh, Walford, the 41 of Ryman. And uh, number 40, the Blueberry Muffin is behind him. That is... Um, Chris Yates. Chris Yates in number 40, who started dead last for this race. So he's, uh, But he came through from 19th on the grid into the top 10 in race one. Yeah, he had a, a very exciting race one as well. I spoke to him afterwards and apparently he overheated his rear tyres so he had no rear end grip. It was very spectacular to behold, but uh, he seems to be... Oh, someone's off. That's Chris Tovey. He's gone into the gravel at uh, 
McLean's there. He manages to rejoin, but he's lost about four or five places in doing that. He hasn't lost the group, though. If he can stay with them, he's still in with a shout. That's a great shame for Chris Tovey, who was uh, holding on at the head of that group of about five or six cars there. Very well indeed. The lead train is heading through the chicane. It is still Simon Clark in number 80 who leads the way. We're just past halfway. Nine and a half minutes of this 20-minute race to go. Luca Proietti back onto the tail of um, Tom Perry now. Then we've got Sparrow in fourth. He's got back ahead of... Uh, the uh, number 92 car, Julie Walford under fire, and uh, Mark Grasby is going to go. Well, he puts two wheels into the gravel at the chicane there, loses out to the number 41 of Martin Ryman, the ex Fiat champion. Chris Tovey is up behind them as well, and the number 40 of Chris Yates from the back of the grid. And uh, ah, not far behind them is your car in the hands of Adam Bollins. Yeah, well, he's, uh, he fits the car better than I do. So, um, yeah, it's a good car, it's just I couldn't drive it. Oh, don't put yourself down. <laughs> Ash has promised to make it fit, for, fit me for next time. And watching all this is making me want to have a go in one of these, certainly. Yeah, do. I'm loving this. Do. Luca Proietti isn't loving it at the moment, though, because he's just gone uh, over the grass at the uh, old hairpin. He's in uh, third place at the moment. And somebody's slowing there. That number 71 car slowing down. That's John Widowson, one of the Hollis team cars, slowing on the Wheatcroft straight. Yes, looks like he's pulling into retire. Yeah, I don't know quite where he's going to pull in there. I don't know if he's going to aim for the end of the pit lane. Yeah, he's nice. swinging across the end of the pit lane. He's going to park on the grass just beyond the pit lane entrance. So John Widowson, uh, number 71, is uh, out of the race. Meantime, we'll uh, try and pick up the... Uh, oh, someone's kicked up an awful lot of dust somewhere. Oh, the screen's changed. We can't see who it was. OK, we'll um, try and pick up who that was in a moment. That was up at Coppice, uh, I think, quite possibly. Waiting for the leaders to head back into sight then. It's uh, just under eight minutes of the race to go. The leader's coming into... The, uh, that may well have been Pete Sparrow, actually, yes, and he's made a mistake at the chicane as well. I think Pete, something up with Pete Sparrow's tyres. He's dropping back here in the 97, so it may have been him who went off. Team Gadget still one and two. Clark ahead of Perry, then it's Prieti, Heary, and uh, Pete Sparrow. Yeah, I can see some dust on his tyres, so it was him who went off. A rare mistake by the king of 2CV racing. Pete Sparrow, he's still ahead of Nick Crispin and uh, Matthew Hollis in sixth and seventh place. Now, next through... It should be Dewey Walford, yes, in the uh, number 55, behind the lapped car of Mick Storey. Ninth is Chris Tovey recovering after his off earlier on. Tenth, Mark Grasby. Eleventh, Chris Yates from the back of the grid. That's an impressive effort. Yep. And uh, twelfth behind him, Martin Ryman. But I don't discount anyone in that group at the front, although they seem to have dropped back off those two. Um, oh, having said that, I was about to say watch out for Luca, and he, he's throwing up some dust down at the old hairpin. And uh, is that Pete Sparrow going off again? He's, he's gathered it up. He, I think Pete is trying very hard, don't you? I think he's shot his rear tyres somehow. It he's overheated the tyres on that number 97 car. It's not likely for Pete to see him struggling like this. He's going to lose out to Nick Crispin in a moment in the 89. There's a lot to be said for just being patient in these two CVs. That's why I was saying look out for Luca earlier. He's got a very cool head and he'll just stay behind, let somebody else do the work and then pick up the pieces. And uh, yeah, it could be his rear tyres. That was the problem Chris Yates had in the in the first race. <laughs> we just had a message from Mark Dickin, who uh, used to be a stock car driver, who says, get me a driving one, they roll easily. Now, he was known for big rollovers during his stock car racing days. He competes, <laughs> in, the, he competes in the Hyundai Coupe Cup now, does uh, Dicko. Uh, um, yeah, I bet he'd love racing one of these. I was going to suggest he get in touch with Maria of the Blueberry Tarts, because I know they're looking for a fourth driver, but not if you're going to roll Maria's car, no. <laughs> The blueberry not... tart. I thought they were blueberry muffins. Ah, Chris Yates' girlfriend, Maria, has her own car. Chris's car is the blueberry muffins, so Maria's called her car the blueberry tarts. <laughs> Only in 2CV <two> racing. <laughs> Message back to Mark Dickin. I'll make you, I reckon you'd make a great blueberry tart. Ideally, they want a fourth female driver, but they're not fussy. <laughs> <laughs> We Mark don't. would relish something like that. I, I know Mark Dickin well. He's uh, got the right sense of humour for that sort of thing. Meantime, uh, there is the blueberry muffin, number 40, just passing Mark Grasby down the straight there. He's got Rosie, the racing car, behind him, number four, number four of uh, Mick Storey. As the, we've got five minutes of the race to go. Number 30 has been given the uh, black and white flag, the warning flag for track limits. That's Luca Proietti, still in the fight for the lead. Still Clark, Perry, Proietti, Heary and Sparrow. So the race order has settled down, but it is still close up front as uh, Roy Eastwood, former winner of the 24-hour race on multiple occasions, coming under attack from 65 of Brent Savage through Redgates there. 
Yeah. Waiting for the uh, leaders to reappear into our site. They're up at uh, Coppice at the moment. Yeah, still the two gadget racing cars in formation out in front. Pete Sparrow has dropped quite a long way back from that group. He's uh, along with uh, Matthew Hollis. Matthew Hollis has got ahead of uh, Nick Crispin, I think, up into sixth place there, the blue and orange machine. Hard to tell from what I can see. We'll have to wait till they come over the line. But yeah, Clark and Perry, to a certain extent, will work together because they're both gadget racing cars, but they will both want to win. So as soon as that last lap flag is shown, or last lap board, I think it is here, all, all gloves will be off. Oh, yes, there they go down the uh, straight. Then the four leaders together now because Pete Sparrow, oh, yes, he's lost another couple of places. I reckon the tyres are shot on that 97 car. He's down to seventh now behind uh, Matthew Hollis and Nick Crispin. Continuing to lead the way is uh, Simon Clark. Now, it'd be a bit galling for Simon if he was to leave for so long and then get mugged by his teammates at the last chicane. But I reckon Tom Perry will try it, you know. Oh, of course he will. Of course he will. And also, no if, team if, orders here. in two CVs, you do not want to be first place going on to the last lap because you are everybody's target. Chris Tovey has recovered nicely. He's trying to pass Julie Walford as they go down towards the right-hander at Redgate. So, rounding out the... Top 10 behind them, Martin Ryman ahead of Grasby, Yates and Adam Bollins still there in 13th place. Then we've got Simon Turner, Brett Savage, Roy Eastwood in the number 70, which is uh, Nigel Hollis, Michael Fox and uh, Chris Hall rounding out uh, the top 19 runners. And then, uh, of course, we've got uh, Mick Storey after uh, his pit stop in 20th. And the uh, other car of uh, number 71, John Widowson, out of the race. I'm just watching uh, Luca Prioretti on the screen. He's... Uh He's trying very hard just to stay on the boot lid of the two um, gadget cars. I really think Luca's the one to watch here. And the, the last lap is, is going to be the one to watch. Well, we've got uh, 2 minutes 45 to go, so it uh, may possibly be last lap this time through. We'll wait and see as they uh, come through. Now, lapping in the 1 minute 45s, the leaders at the moment. Here they come into the chicane. That's going to be... Uh, yeah, two minutes 20 as they cross the line just over so we will get two more laps out of this into the penultimate lap we go then of the second 2CV race of the weekend Simon Clark continues to lead Tom Perry closing up on him and closing on then in so is Luca Proietti Brian Heary trying to make a move as they go into Redgate here he comes down the inside and he's going to go into third place in the number 92 so the Tête Rouge crisis racing machine goes up to third past the Bacon team car Incidentally, it's called the Bacon Team because they like eating bacon. <laughs> yeah, it's that simple. OK. <laughs> well, let's hope the Bacon Team are not left with egg all over their faces after this one, then. Oh, they won't. You know, there's a lot to happen yet. It, and this is a long track as well. You think, oh, it's only a lap. But a lot can happen in a lap here. This is a... Whoa, and uh, Luca Preti very sideways there, coming out of the old hair. But he nearly lost it there. As I say about him ending up with egg all over his face, he nearly did. But the Bacon Racing car... Keeping going in uh, fourth place. He's lost a bit of ground there, though, to the three leaders. Still gadget racing in uh, first and second places. He's dropped quite a way back. I wonder if he's overheated his tyres. Brian Heary on the attack, the X Rover saloon car racer. Positioning himself ready for an attack. Uh, perhaps has he had a win yet in this championship? I don't I think, think he has. I think his first race Heary. was. He was driving... Um, Glenn Oswin's car at Cadwell and won his first UCV race. Excellent. And none of us knew who he was and came won the race. So I don't think he's won one since. Well, he could win this one still. He's uh, gearing up to attack Gadget Racing. Yes, I can see that damage on Simon Clark's car that you pointed out a few laps ago here, Christine. Yeah, I think his fan's OK. In this heat, him to have gone on that long, he, he's, he's not damaged the fan. OK, 39 seconds to go. The last lap board is out as they cross the line. One to, one to win, then, for Simon Clark in car number 80, the car raced by Ainsley Boosfield earlier on in the first race. They were supposed to race the other way round, so this is working out very nicely, thank you, for Simon Clark. His decision to go in race two instead seems to be uh, profiting for him at the moment, but we'll wait and see what happens at the uh, end of this lap. Tom Perry, his teammate, is uh, sat there behind him. They've been 1-2 uh, for most of this race after the early exchanges settled down. The clock about to count down to zero. Three wide into the chicane. Uh, Adam Bollins is in there. Mark Grasby and also uh, the Blueberry Muffin driven by Chris Yates, number 40. So a Blueberry Muffin and a Jelly Snake fighting it out there. It's like something out of um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, isn't it? Oh, there's some cracking cars. It's a pity um, that Armageddon isn't here. There's this former Scottish car called Armageddon. And... Um, 
It's still called Armageddon years later. I mean, what a name for a car. I dread to think how some of the team names are thought up in this series. They, they are brilliant, though, all of them. It's a wonderfully eccentric, like, yet brilliant race series. But some of them have quite normal names. For example, Ash Carter's car, 23, um, we were just watching Adam Bollins in it a second ago. That car is called Jess. So th most That's quite of them normal for this championship. Meanwhile, <laughs> anyway, the leaders are heading towards the chicane for the final time now. Is Tom Perry going to try and mug his teammate Simon Clark on the last chicane to take the win? Of the checkered flag he is being ready. Here we go. Which side's he going to go? He's going to go to the left. Uh, Simon Clark is uh, later on the brakes for it. I think Simon's done enough here. Through the chicane they come. The checkered flag is in sight for them. Here they come. Three of them line astern, and Simon Clark wins our second 2CV race of the afternoon. Tom Perry second, and Brian Heary third. Luca Proietti takes fourth place in the number 30. Now, who's going to be fifth? It's going to be Pete Sparrow. He's got back ahead of Nick Crispin for fifth position. Uh, seventh goes to Matthew Hollis. We uh, kind of ignored those three towards the end. Sorry about that, uh, gents. But, uh, we were so busy concentrating on the lead battle there. Uh, eighth place, uh, quite a bit further back, should go to uh, Chris Tovey. He's just uh, flinging it through the chicane for the final time. Yes, here he comes in for eighth position. Matt Hollis has just pulled off immediately after the line. Yes, looks like that car may have overheated. I can see some steam there. Uh, you wouldn't. It's air-cooled. <laughs> no water and I'll, make, and I'll make a fool of myself right at the end of the race, typically. <laughs> it does look hot, though. That looks like smoke. Yes, I can see some steam or smoke there as he pulls in. Bonnet has gone up. The rest of the finishers come home. So eighth was Chris Tovey, ninth Martin Wolf, uh, Julie Wolford, sorry, uh, tenth Martin Ryman, Chris Yates, eleventh Mark Grasby, twelfth Adam Bollins, thirteenth Simon Turner is fourteenth. Uh, the sixty-five of Brent Savage is next. Then uh, it's uh, the number seventy of Nigel Hollis, Roy Eastwood, Michael Fox, and the final finisher will be number ninety-six of uh, Chris Hall, the last man on the lead lap, because of course you've got Mick Storey a lap down. So a round of applause, ladies and gents, for all of our 2CV battlers in that uh, excellent uh, second race of the day. We just had a tweet from Gallery of Speed, who tweeted in earlier on saying, these 2CVs, just how do they do it? Epic racing, I need to have a go. Come and have a go. In fact, um, I was just chatting to Ash Carter before the race. We're talking about doing track day after the 24 hours. Uh, these, these cars are all going to go to the garage and be frantically prepared for the 24 hour race now. But um, we're talking about doing a track day together um, after the 24 hour race just to go play. So, you know, come and talk there to you us go. if you, if you want to have, have a go. go. There you go, Mark Dickin, who spoke to us during that race. Come and, come and try one out. Try uh, something a bit different. Absolutely. I mean, I was racing in Formula Ford when I first tried a 2CV, and I thought, I'll, I'll give one of these silly things a go for a laugh, and 22 years later, I'm still racing one. Well, the website is 2cvracing.org.uk. Yep. Uh, I'm going to head down to uh, interview the top three now. So, Christine, thank you very much for the Thank you very <laughs> that was super. Well, like, that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. That's like you drive everyone else away, isn't it? <laughs> Stunning. Well, uh, Simon Clark and Tom Perry then, uh, a Team Gadget Racing 1-2 finish. Uh, look, like there's some real teamwork going on there. Yeah, there was. I mean, uh, Tom and I are really good friends as well, so uh, to work with him over the last few years since he's been in the team, uh, it's the first time we've ever both been right at the front, both having a crack at it. So it was brilliant knowing you've got somebody that you can 100% trust. 
um, and you kind of know what each other's going to do as well. Yeah, so it, it was brilliant. And to have him there other than anybody else was just a breathe of sigh of relief. <laughs> there must have been a time uh, midway through the race where you thought it would just be the two of you because you built out that gap, didn't you, working together? Uh, but then they just slowly started to inch back towards you. Yeah, I, it was frustrating because I could just see the two of us breaking away and I thought, brilliant. And then, to be fair, I saw Luca and Brian catching back up again and reeling themselves back in. I thought, I don't believe it. They're going to be there again at the end of the race. And Pete was in there for a while as well. He kept disappearing off. All I could see in the mirrors was dust clouds and people <laughs> disappearing wide. So uh, I said, keep going, boys, keep going. And we'll just try and keep it on the black stuff. And uh, that's what we did. And uh, when that last lap ball came out, I looked in the mirrors and Tom was sitting there. I thought, this is it. We shall bag this now, work hard and we've got this. Well, Tom, you were the pusher in that one. You were the one who was uh, uh, playing rear gunner for most of that. But uh, I'm sure, had there been half a chance to take the win, you'd have gone for it. Simon's taught me everything about being fast in two CVs, and I think I owed him that one to uh, help push him. I don't think, ultimately, had, had we started to scrap, we'd have fallen back into the clutches of the other cars. And for us now, moving into the 24-hour race to have a 1-2 like that is a big bonus for us. Um, onwards and upwards. Well, Brian Heary from ninth on the grid, did you really think the podium was on the cards there? I did actually. Before the race, I thought if the car was going well, I thought I could win here because I've won here before on the last lap. <laughs> um, so I was I was just a bit too far off coming into the last corner. I would have had a go, but I thought let's get a third instead of a disaster. <laughs> you, you were sort of mired in the midfield for a lot of it and then you broke free and it looked like you were just getting towards the leaders there towards the end. Yeah, well I, I dropped back because everybody was all over each other and then I had to run at them again because I was making mistakes. Uh, and and when, you, when you're on your own you can get your own lines and catch them up. Wow. A great podium result anyway, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you.